we have now reached the end of the decision making possibilities and I would like to sum up once again our post extraction decision making tree so far. With regards to the timing, the first choice to make is to go for an immediate or not. And in my mind, I would consider an immediate if I have all the provision for an immediate flapless with an immediate provisional in the aesthetic zone. That means that we're looking for a fully intact bone wall of at least one millimeter in thickness. We're looking for absence of any inflammation signs, a thick gingival biotype, a sufficiently aesthetic architecture of the soft tissues, and of course, a patient who is engaged, motivated, and good in oral hygiene. If these conditions are not fulfilled, I will not consider immediate implant, and I'm not favoring immediate implants with a flap in the aesthetic zone. The next checkpoint will be if I will do the rich preservation or not. Again, the determining question for rich preservation in my mind is how quickly do I need the implant in place? If my patient does not want to have the implant or cannot afford or doesn't desire the implant right now, but might open the possibility for the near or longer term future, I would consider a good case for a rich preservation. On the other hand, if the patient wants to have the implant as soon as possible, I will skip the rich preservation altogether. I will let the socket heal naturally and evaluate the possibility of placing the implant with an early placement and simultation GBR at six to eight weeks. At that time point, the determinant question will be, can I get primary stability of the implant with the existing bone configuration? And then, if I have the conditions, which is, as we discussed in detail, a sufficiently height of the palatal wall and enough width to some portion of the alveolar ridge to guarantee or to secure my primary stability, then I will go ahead and place the implant with the simultaneous GBR. Finally, if I don't have the bone volume I need to ensure the primary stability at this stage, then we're looking into a two-stage augmentation, which can happen with many different pathways, can be a block graft, can be a non-resorbable membrane, or in some limited cases, could also be with a GBR. Reviewing all these navigation possibilities, I have to get back to the discussion we had in the beginning about navigating, because different people might navigate these decisions in a different way, and the outcome is what counts. In my navigation philosophy, the immediate implant placement with an immediate provisional is actually a rare occurrence in the aesthetic zone. It will happen between 5 to 10% of the anterior maxilla implants that come to my way. It is a predictable and minimal invasive procedure which utilizes the complete digital workflow for the benefit of the patient. However, the conditions and the requirements for this technique are quite high and complex. Therefore, many patients will not qualify for this approach. The same goes uh, for the rich preservation. In my clinical practice, rich preservation is also rare in the aesthetic zone, mainly because I would not see any advantage in the workflow that I follow, which aims to get the implant to the patient as soon as possible with as little intervention as possible. So the working horse, 60 to 70% of my cases in the aesthetic zone, still remain in the early placement with simultaneous GBR. I find this technique very predictable. I find the advantage of having to work with healed and adequate volume of soft tissues very important for the aesthetic zone. And with the design of the implants being really evolving very quickly, I believe that we can get more and more out of very compromised situations. On the same time, this has reduced significantly the amount of two-stage augmentations that I conduct, which at this stage is no more than 10 to 15% in the aesthetic zone. Here, I need to note that when I started my training with implant dentistry about 20 years ago, block grafts and two-stage augmentation was almost the norm for every anterior case. The majority of the implants in the aesthetic zone had to undergo a two-stage augmentation at that time. Today, it has become a rare procedure, and this is thanks to our understanding of the biology, but also improvements in the technology, new design of surfaces and implants that can get osseointegration 
and primary stability and maintain stable results even in very compromised sites. So remember, minimal invasiveness is a combination. Understanding of the biology, possibilities offered by the technology, and of course, our own treatment philosophy to always push the envelope and strive for treatments that are faster, least invasive, with less pain, less risks, and less interventions.